Welcome to Monday, December 21st, 2020. It's the first day of winter, and I'm afraid to say there's more wind coming, although not as much wind as we had over the weekend. Boy, the wind was awful this weekend. Some of you had it worse than others. It was the usual suspects, parts of Wyoming, western Nebraska, parts of Montana, but also parts of Colorado hit with very high winds with those strong jet stream winds. But there's this mild start to the weather coming this week. It's going to be windy and mild today through early Tuesday. Actually, temperatures will be up a bit. The southwest winds aloft will be in a little bit more of a mild air mass. But again, even though the wind won't be as bad as it was over the weekend, there will still be windy areas. Now, we do have a cold front arriving late Tuesday night into Wednesday, bringing a chance of snow, mainly to the mountains, wind, and much colder temperatures. It's going to be a little bit of a shock to the system because many areas will be 40s and 50s today and Tuesday. Wednesday, many areas will only be in the 20s, and there is going to be a howling cold north wind on Wednesday. If you're going to be traveling Wednesday, there's going to be just enough snow in spots to make roads, highways, mountain passes icy, and a lot of wind, so keep that in mind. Now, the good news is that the weather will be fair Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. A little ridge of high pressure comes in those two days. Jupiter and Saturn, the conjunction, reaches its peak tonight. We'll take a look at that. Long-term signs of an active Christmas weekend and into New Year's week and weekend. It does look like, I think, uh, what we're seeing. The weather will be pretty busy from this coming weekend through New Year's weekend. We'll look at that. First of all, here we are with the upper-level wind pattern today. Here's this next front and trough off the coast of British Columbia. We've got a trough in the Great Lakes and east. Here is that northwest wind aloft, making it windy across the region. But at the same time, we've got an area of high pressure right here. So for today through midday Tuesday, we're going to be underneath this regime right here. But here comes the next system, and it's a quick mover from today to midnight tomorrow night. Look at that. Woo! That is moving fast, folks. That's typical in a La Nina for systems to move coast to coast very, very quickly. As you can see, if we follow the wind barbs, the winds aloft are coming right out of the Northwest Territories into the Rockies. See this? That's why there is going to be a huge drop in temperature very, very quickly as we work our way into the day on Wednesday. So it'll be very mild today and tomorrow, but really cold and also pretty windy. Very strong northerly winds come in behind this system. So not only will it be cold Wednesday, but windy as well. Also, overnight Tuesday into Wednesday morning, there will be another period of snow in the mountains of Colorado, Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, and Utah. Another nice shot of snow for the ski areas, but it's not a system that's going to do much on the plains. Here's the cold air that you can see come in behind the system for Wednesday. This is what the snowfall looks like, and boy, this looks familiar. I have shown you a thousand maps, it seems, over the last two months that look just like it. Mountains get snow, lighter amounts on the plains, and that's what will happen with this system coming in late Tuesday night and into the day on Wednesday. Now, as we work our way into Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, this is the system all the way to the East Coast by Friday. So these systems are just racing across the country. So we have a little sliver of high pressure coming Christmas Eve, Christmas Day for moderating temperatures, lighter winds, and a better looking weather pattern. But here comes the next wave. Here's another wave behind it. This guy right here will move in very quickly, and there it is. By Saturday night, the wave moves through mountain snow, snow showers on the plains, and some colder temperatures. Queued up are two more weather systems, three more weather systems, all lined up to come on in. As we work our way into Tuesday of next week, the 29th, this system here looks to be a more potent system. we got a low coming into the Great Basin. We're going to kind of keep an eye on this guy to see if it doesn't become a little bit of a larger storm system in the Tuesday, Wednesday time frame of next week. And longer term, if we go out all the way to just past the new year, we have a broad trough, colder weather in the western United States as we ring in New Year's weekend. So it's going to be a busy wintry weather pattern after the mild weather today and tomorrow. Now let's take a look at what the cloud conditions are going to be like for the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. What I'm showing you is a cloud forecast for 5 p.m. mountain time for the region. Now this map is a little hard to see. Here's Wyoming right here. 
and then we've got Colorado right here. You can see that uh, the sky conditions are, are looking really good in Colorado. The numbers you're seeing here is the percentage of the sky that's covered in cloud according to the computer model. Again, it's a computer model, so take it with a grain of salt. Colorado, you've got a really good chance over most of Colorado to see the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction this evening. Now notice we've got a nine in Cheyenne, a 40 in Fort Collins here. The cloudiness looks to be more distributed towards the central and northwest areas of Wyoming. This is where I think seeing the uh, conjunction may not, your chances may not be as good. Salt Lake area, you've got a chance. Hopefully those clouds will uh, not move into the area there. Anywhere you see cloudiness, it doesn't mean you can't see it, but there is the risk that a cloud, these are mainly high level clouds, could come on in and uh, obscure the view. So right now, the better chances are gonna be over Southern Wyoming and Colorado into areas of Nebraska and areas of Northeastern Wyoming. Those are your best chances. Now, one thing to point out, this really gets started. You wanna start looking around 5 p.m off to the south southwest after five o'clock it just starts to get dark enough to where you can see things better as five o'clock goes to 5 15 to 5 30 to 5 45 to 6 as it gets darker it will get brighter but the thing to remember is is that through the course of the evening jupiter and saturn will drop to the west and will drop lower on the horizon so if you go out seven, eight o'clock looking for it, you're gonna miss it. You wanna watch between five and six o'clock if you possibly can. Now these are the directions on the compass. This would be due west. This is 210 degrees. So basically to the west southwest is where you want to look. The moon is gonna be up here off to the edge there. So to the southwest, low on the horizon. This is pretty low on the horizon, but above the horizon enough to get above the trees, get above the buildings, get above the foothills and mountains, but it will be sinking. So keep your fingers crossed. This is really a once in a lifetime experience. This hasn't happened in over 800 years. So it's very special. It's also very special to happen on the first day of winter season. Now we're getting reports across the globe where they're experiencing the darkness right now. And uh, I'll show you that here in a minute. Now, one thing that I want to show you right here is this was from Cheyenne last night. This was around 515 or so. Here's Jupiter and you can see Jupiter's moons. This is with a 300 millimeter telephoto lens. Jupiter here, Saturn here. So you can see them coming together. And so tonight, Saturn is going to be right there and so it's gonna look like one star to the naked eye. I really recommend a telescope or binoculars. If you have a 300 millimeter or bigger telephoto lens, it won't be hard to get a great shot if you've got a tripod. So it's really gonna put on a show. Now, if you've got a telescope, this came in from Brisbane, Australia from an astrophotographer this morning, our time. So you can see them if you have a high powered telescope, this is from an eight inch telescope, you can see Jupiter's moons, Jupiter and Saturn all coming together. Quite a sight if you have a good telescope. Thanks for watching the Day Weather Podcast. We'll talk to you on Tuesday.